Hello neighbor, I'm Robert Burns and welcome once again to another edition of Sound Off Louisiana. And I expect for this edition to be fairly brief because if I am fortunate enough, I'd like to have a second video uh, and that will be a video of at least, hopefully, actually footage of Stephen Wagesback, the president of Lobby, Lobby being short for Louisiana Association of Business and Industry, uh, to make an official statement on the content of uh, this particular feature. If he chooses to do so, I'm filming this on Sunday the 18th of October. Uh, we will have it as a separate video beneath this video. Uh, and the purpose of today's video is, you know, I know everybody's largely focused on the presidential race and and uh, that's certainly understandable, but uh, you know, I name this blog Sound Off Louisiana and I tend to focus strictly on uh, Louisiana state-based um, matters. I said, I know all the focus is on the national race, but I'm going to tell you something. These judicial races probably impact our own individual lives even more so than the presidential race. And uh, there is an opening on the First Circuit Court of Appeals. And uh, there are three qualified candidates who chose to run in the race. Uh, there's a Democrat, uh, Melanie Newcomb Jones, and there are two Republicans, Chris Hester, who serves as a city court judge now, uh, as well as Joanna Landrino. Uh, and I looked through the campaign finance reports of all three because I had the specific intent of seeing do any of these have the extensive backing of the trial lawyer cabal. Uh, and I'm here to tell you one of them does, uh, and that being Chris Hester. Uh, Chris Hester is a Republican. As I said, he's a, a city court judge. And we're going to give you the campaign finance report, but we're also going to give you a table uh, showing the extent of his reliance upon the trial lawyer cabal to fund his campaign. And uh, I crunched these numbers several times, and each time I got over 50%. Uh, and that, that troubles me greatly, uh, that, you know, we go through all of this work to get tort reform, and we support candidates in the legislature that would be supportive of tort reform. And thank God that we finally got it. There's more to do, but at least we got some important steps done in this past session. And I assume that the only response a trial lawyer cabal can do is to then start getting some judges that would be uh, more inclined to see the th th things from a favorable light from their vantage point. And when they're seeing it from a favorable light from the trial lawyer cabal vantage point, you can take it to the bank. It's in an unfavorable light where you and I are concerned. Uh, so I'm not going to categorize the individual lawyers who have contributed to Chris Hester's campaign. I'm going to put that in a table. I did look at the campaign finance reports of the other two candidates. There's essentially no and very minor contributions from attorneys, period, in Joanna Landrino's campaign. She did get, I think, $2,000 from Taylor Porter. They are not a part of the injury trial lawyer cabal. They get an awful lot of their work from uh, serving as defense counsel when the state of Louisiana is sued. And Jeff Landry has certainly not been bashful about awarding those contracts out to Taylor Porter. Um, but I'm going to let it go with that. I don't know about you, but it, dis it, it, it disturbs me greatly uh, regarding the candidacy of Chris Hester and the extensive reliance on uh, the trial lawyer cabal, like I said, by my computations, over 50% uh, to fund his campaign. So I felt like that's something that ought to be factored in to your vote. Endorsements, not just, let me, let me bring this out too not just of Lobby, Louisiana Association of Business and Industry, and that's the very group who worked so hard for the tort reform. And that's why I'm certainly going to place a phone call to Lobby's office tomorrow morning, Monday, the 19th of October, and give Mr. Waggis back an opportunity to uh, provide us with the rationale for why Lobby made this endorsement of Chris Hester. But I'd like to also emphasize that Mr. Esther has the backing of the AFL-CIO. Uh, that also is, is it's an interesting that you've got uh, Louisiana Association in Business and Industry and the AFL-CIO in solidarity behind one candidate. Um, I don't know, but that does, that's troubling 
there, but the much more troubling aspect from my vantage point uh, is the extensive trial lawyer cabal funding of the Chris Hester campaign. So that's it for this edition of Sound Off Louisiana. If you see a video beneath this one, it will be uh, Mr. Wagaspak, the president of Lobby, responding to our inquiries, uh, giving him the opportunity to uh, explain why Lobby made this endorsement. Whatever he's got to say, we will air it in its entirety. There will be nothing edited out. And that's our policy at Sound Off Louisiana. If there is no video beneath this one, it will mean that he chose not to defend the endorsement. So this is Robert Burns. Once again, we hope you've had an outstanding weekend. We're only, I don't know, let's see, 12 and 3, about 15 days away from from the big election, so I hope everybody's all geared up for it. If you haven't already voted absentee, certainly get out there and vote on November the 3rd. Uh, and I hope you found this little tidbit of information uh, to be of value as you make your selection in the open seat for the First Circuit Court of Appeals. Once again, Robert Burns thanking you for your dedication, and we'll see you next time.